Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, I interview Tammy from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. She has experienced quite a bit of activity out in the forest, and she pursues the topic looking for any answers regarding the Sasquatch. Tammy has provided some neat photos to go along with their interview, and I was really excited to check them out. They appear to be the same type of structures that I have personally found and seen from across the continent. The Upper Peninsula is a forested region in Michigan bordering three of the Great Lakes and extending outward from Wisconsin. I personally have heard many strange accounts from this region of the United States. I've heard Bigfoot stories, Dogman stories, UFO stories, and other strange accounts like the Little People. This is a vast territory, and throughout the ages, many strange accounts have been reported from the area. Before we start the show, I wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers and people who follow the channel. I really appreciate you guys, and I think out of all the other Bigfoot channels, we have some of the best down-to-earth people right here. So I couldn't ask for a better group of people. We don't force anyone to think anything here, whether you think it's spiritual or some type of primate creature, or whether you think these creatures are only out to kill you. I don't force anyone to think anything. I certainly don't try to push a narrative. I let people decide for themselves. I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, with all that being said, let's dive into this next Bigfoot interview from the UP of Michigan. Hey, Tammy, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. I appreciate you being on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Tammy, if you would, tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of where your experiences happened and the stories behind them, if you would. Oh, okay, sure. Um, well, I am from uh, Michigan, Upper Michigan. It's the Upper Peninsula of Lower Michigan and... Um, Back in 2016, in um, November, a couple of days after Thanksgiving, a friend and I were um, decided we were going to go out for a walk in this one of these trails that um, we like to walk in, and it's a like a nine mile four loop hiking, biking, snowshoeing. Um, it's a very popular trail for people to you know who want to be out in the outdoors and stuff and we were just like yeah let's go for a night walk it was a it was a nice like november warmer than usual evening up here in the upper peninsula and so we figured we'd just do some night walking on a trail and um we got out there and this is an area where there's a lot of pines and cedars um, birch. It's a pretty well wooded hiking area and you're not far from, you know, like town, but yet you feel very removed from the busyness of town when you're out there because of how wooded it is. So we went out there, we, um, we got in the parking lot and I'm thinking, I'm thinking we got there around, it was seven ish, maybe eight. And we were, um, PM at night. And we're just getting onto the trail and um, we get across this little bridge area and we go into the the hiking, so more of the hiking trail area. You have to cross this little bridge and we take a right turn and we 
started heading on one of the side loops and we heard something we heard, you know it sounded like something somebody was walking and it was at first we were like oh it's it's probably other people out here and it sounded like to me it sounded like it was something on two feet but it didn't sound like a human it sounded more heavy and the friend that i was with was a little nervous you know but not really nervous because it was the two of us but it was she was like what do you think that was and i'm like well i don't know maybe a deer but there was a part of me going no it's probably not a deer because it sounded like it was something on two feet and heavy i don't know really how else to explain it and then the next weird thing that happened to us was as we were getting a little farther on the trail we saw what now i would what i would say it would be now i would think this would have been eye shine but at that point we saw this it looked it looked like a small orb and it might not have been an orb it might have been an eye shine but i think now when i look back i think it was probably eye shine but we saw this like light that was up in a tree and you know it's very wooded there's this narrow trail and we're looking to the left now we're looking to the left and we're like what is that and i'm like i don't know and my friend was like well maybe it's somebody wearing a headlamp and i'm like it can't it can't be someone wearing a headlamp because they would have to be up in the tree or they'd have to be really tall and then we were trying to think maybe somebody's out here with a four-wheeler or something but then we would have heard we would have heard you know a noise and then there's no way a four-wheeler is going to be that high up so that was the second thing we were like, well, this is kind of weird. You know, first we hear something walking on the right that sounded heavy. And then we see this strange light anomaly stationary in a tree that had to be, I don't know if it was 10, 12 feet up. It was just really high up and that was to our left. And then as we're, we continue walking and we are probably, we're probably a mile back by this point. Um, and it's now dark and we're just walking and talking and wanted to get out, you know, have a night walk. And we come around to another area where there's this little seating area and there's a fire pit and we stayed there for quite a while. We just kind of, you know, we talked and we were kind of going over, you know, what we think might kinds of things that might be out here and and Bigfoot never never came to like you know we never said oh maybe it's Bigfoot not at this point but um we were thinking maybe you know there might be fairies out there or elementals because both of us are into unknown phenomenon stuff and I thought yeah it's kind of weird you know with that light I couldn't get that out of my mind and then as we were heading back towards the parking lot, which we were probably now, you know, like a mile to two miles back in the woods. And there was nothing else that was really strange that happened until we came out of the woods and we were heading back towards the um, bridge area. And as we were getting closer to the bridge, which is, I'd say, a good maybe two to three blocks before you get back to the parking lot. So we were coming back around on, I don't know what, which loop we were on because it was dark out. And at this point I didn't know the loops very well out there, Um, but she did. So we were coming back to the area where you cross the bridge to get back to the parking lot. And we heard this and I don't know how else to describe it except howling, crying, screaming, screeching. I don't know. I just know that it's a noise I had never heard before growing up, um, growing up in the woods in a hunting family and knowing like noises of pretty much all animals. We kind of looked at each other and we're like, what, what was that? Like, or what is this? (laughs) So we didn't know at that point, okay, should we run back to the parking lot? Should we walk? Should we stay? And so we just kind of like we're casually walking, but at a little quicker pace. And we kept hearing it. And it was like a call, a screech. I mean, it was it was all of that. But yet it was like you just can't explain it. And at this point in my life, um, 
I had never heard anything like that before. Um, I was comfortable with other stuff, um, but this was just like new to me, new in my realm of, you know, what is this? So we get to the parking lot and it's still kind of calling and screeching. It was trailing off a little bit. It was, it was obvious that we were getting farther away from it versus getting closer to it. Now, um, this would be, you know, my first, my first experience in the, in the Sasquatch realm. I've had a lot happen since then, but this was the first one. So I was not only confused, I was a little scared and I was curious. So we get to the parking lot and we were talking and I, I said, you know, there's nothing in my world that I can compare that to. So I need to go home and do some research on, you know, what that might be. So, um, the name, the, you know, Bigfoot did come up in our conversation um, loosely while we were standing there talking. But we were always like, is it a dying cow? Is it a deer that's hurt? And we, <laughs> we just didn't know. So we had been out there for I don't know, at least a few hours. I'm trying to, I can't really remember like the time frame unless I look back at my, um, like my notes from my formal report. Because I ended up getting a report filed with the BFRO out of all this and you know I'll get to that in a minute but so we got in our cars we both drove back to our houses she lived closer to this um, hiking trail than I did I had to drive back to Escanaba and I ended up getting home going online and doing research you know fox calls cougar deer birds of it I just I I googled as many animal noises as I could even though I knew animal noises to try and see if any of them matched and nothing would match. And then I thought, you know, for the heck of it, I'm going to look up Bigfoot Sasquatch calls or noises or whatever. I didn't know at the time what to say when I typed it in, you know, do I, do I type in calls? Do I type, what do I type in? So I typed in Bigfoot calls and I ended up getting a whole bunch of, you know, like calls from Oregon and Washington and I thought, holy crap, there's there's actually a bunch of documented Bigfoot stuff. So this opened up this opened up a world that I um was obviously new to. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna start listening to some of this stuff on the internet that I'm finding. And um I listened to a few different calls that were close to what we heard out there that night, but not quite. Um, until I came across a call that was recorded from Rainier in Rainier, Washington. And it's a two minute video that someone had, had posted on YouTube. And I listened to it a few times just to make sure. And I thought that's almost exactly what we heard. So I messaged my friend and I said, Hey, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you a link to a YouTube video of some audio and I want you to listen to it. And I want you to tell me if this is what we just heard a couple hours ago. So I sent it to her and she gets back to me and she's like, that sounds pretty damn close to what we heard. And I'm like, you're kidding me. So does that mean we, does that mean we just heard Bigfoot? So, you know, I had to wrap my brain around what, what just happened. Like, is this really, because at that point in my life, um, I was comfortable with other, um, unknown things because I'm a psychic medium, um, by trade. That's what I do. I do readings for people. Um, I do land assessments. I do remote viewing. You know, there's, there's different things that I had already been exposed to as far as being a psychic medium. I was that I'm very comfortable with being in for 20 plus years. So to like all of a sudden have this experience that is way out of my like scope of unknown stuff. I'm like, what do I do with this? Like, what should we do with this? Should we do anything with it at all? Should I go back out there? Um, should I investigate? Um, I mean, the curious side of me was, you know, like wanted to know, you know, is this, something that I need to, you know, maybe jump into. Is this a field now that I need to jump into? 
Um, so a few days later, I went back out there alone and um, went back to the air, went actually took the, the same trail and went, but went back to an area where I think the call came from. I thought, yeah, I'm going to just walk in. I went out there during the day. I didn't go out there at night by myself because at this point, I, at this point, this was early on in my Bigfoot journey and I did not want to go out there alone at night. I thought, well, I'll go out there during the day and try and pinpoint where we heard the, the screeching or the calling from. So I did that. I get out there. I go farther back a little bit farther than where we were, you know, maybe like a mile and a half back in the trail area. And I stood back there and I just stood, stood there looking around and I heard a very similar no a noise or call or whatever you, you want to call it. I don't know, you know, calling, screeching. I heard a very similar, similar vocalization to what we had just heard a few nights before off in the distance. And it kind of freaked me out. I didn't get super scared, but I was, you know, by myself and this is a new world I'm jumping into. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm noting it in my head. I just heard it during the day, but it wasn't as pronounced as it was the night we were out there, which was, you know, very, the night we were out there together, it was very loud and very, you know, like, more of a hi, I'm here. I know you're here, <laughs> but this was more of a just. It was it more of in the in the distance, and it was. I don't know if it was just. It was confirmation for me that okay, there is something out here, and is it Bigfoot? So then, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think it was too long after that. I'm actually looking at my BFR report re- right now. Um, I ended up getting in touch with a BFRO investigator in the Upper Peninsula. Um, I want to say it wasn't too much longer after that. There is this um, person here in the Upper Peninsula named Rich Meyer, who actually runs a Bigfoot organization that I'm now a part of. um, That he was he was actually doing a a few minute spot on the news and I had caught the tail end of it and um, I reached out to him through I think it was either through Facebook it was probably through Facebook Messenger I reached out to him and just said hey I saw your you know your clip (laughs) and um, I think you're the person I need to talk to Um, a friend of mine and I had an experience and I wanted, I want to like reach out to somebody and I want to go forward. I want to, I want to know, I want to talk to somebody who's in the Bigfoot world and I want to, I want to move forward with whatever and see where it goes because that's, you know, that's in my nature to be like, okay, if this was Bigfoot, then let's figure it out. So I reached out to, uh, Rich Meyer and, um, told him that I had had an experience and that I went out there again and had some more weird vocalizations and needed to talk to somebody who, you know, has been doing this stuff or whatever. So we ended up meeting. I want to say we didn't get a chance to meet until maybe December because the first experience happened in November. And during from November to when we met, I kept going back to different things on YouTube, you know, like Bigfoot sightings, Bigfoot calls, different things, people, people who are willing to come forward and talk about. And I was reading other people's um, experiences. So now I'm not, not feeling so alone anymore. I'm like, okay, so this, I'm not the only one who's heard this vocalization stuff that is so pronounced that you can't like, forget it. Like you just, and you can't wrap your head around it. I mean, even to this day, five years into this, there's there's things that happen where I go, is this really happening? Like, <laughs> to me, um, how do you explain it? So we ended up, Rich and I ended up meeting in Escanaba, sitting down, and I gave him 
the, the, you know, the full account. This is the night we were out there. This is what happened. And he said that he was going to try and get it published because it was a, um, it was a, a class, they call it a class B report. So he was going to compile it, um, work on getting it published. And then he wanted to take, take me back out there and he wanted me to walk him through the experience. So we ended up doing that. Um, and I want to say that was maybe now in January because there was snow. I remember we went the first time Rich Meyer and I went out there together because he's a BFRO investigator, but he also runs his own organization in the Upper Peninsula. So we went out there together. Um, and then there was snow on the ground. And he had brought, you know, some of his equipment with him, like the parabolic and and then just all of his knowledge, because he's been um, investigating and researching Bigfoot Sasquatch stuff for quite a while. So we we went back out there together, and we had some um, a couple of strange things, you know, like there was areas where we were out there walking together where we both felt like we were being pushed out. Like, so we started out there at dusk, and then we were out there through the night to have that, you know, evening experience to try and maybe recreate the evening experience that my friend and I had. And there were certain areas out there that we were walking where we just felt uncomfortable and we felt like we were being pushed out. And neither one of us said that, you know, like, like we waited until later and Rich was like, how did you feel like right back there? And I'm like, you know, I felt kind of weird. Like I felt like something was watching us and we needed to go. And he said, yep, that's exactly how I felt. So there was areas where we, were, we felt like we had been pushed out. Um, and then he had he had told me when we had had our meeting, I'll back that up a little bit. When we had had our first meeting and I was explaining to him, you know, my experience and is this Bigfoot and whatever. He said, there are other people who have had experiences out there, but most people don't want to come out and talk about it have anything published most people who have had experiences weird things happen to them out there on that specific hiking trail are not willing to have anything you know their name attached to anything so he said i'm not the first person to come forward with anything i'm just the first person who's like hey let's be public about this you know maybe go somewhere with it so that made me actually feel better too because i was like okay i'm not the only person who's had experiences out there um but you know it's a it's a it's a really it's a really cool area. I mean there's like nine there's nine miles and loops of and it's it's all wooded for the most part. Um you can be out there and feel like you're really removed from society even though you're not that far from society. Um it's beautiful and there's a river, there's a river that runs through it. Um there's power lines way way in the back. Um it's just a very a very unique area, but a very, um, a very squatchy area, you know, now five years later. Um, and there's other people I have talked to too that, you know, don't want to come forward with their stuff, but it is, it, it can be, um, squatchy depending on what time of the day you're out there, um, or evening more so in the evening. But then anyway, um, I'm getting off, you know, I'm getting off track a little bit. So we went back out there, we investigated together. And during this time, we had went out there. I think we had been out there three times together um, to try and collect more evidence, you know, where he would, Rich would take his knocking stick and knock on trees and we would get a response. Um, I have found over the last five years, I have found numerous structures. um, And that would be after, you know, after my report, once I got more comfortable in this field of, you know, Sasquatch research. So my report ended up getting published with the BFRO in, I don't know, 2018, I want to say maybe 2018 is when it was finally published on the the database. So if you were to go to the BFRO, um, you know, database um, and you looked up, Delta County in Michigan, you'd be able to find my report that is there, um, and it's considered a class B. So then after all that, I joined 
Rich Meyer's organization, which is the Upper Peninsula Bigfoot Sasquatch Research Organization. I ended up joining that. So I um, help out with that. Um, every year we have conferences and have guest speakers and do expeditions. So I get involved in the expeditions. And then I do my own, I do my own research on the side um, I own my own, you know, psychic medium business and unknown phenomenon stuff. So I'll, I do stuff kind of, sometimes I do stuff multi, you know, if someone wants me to do a reading of their property, now I'm going out to their property and assessing if maybe they have Sasquatch um, stuff going on besides maybe paranormal. So it's, you know, I've, I've gone from having this initial experience of what, world am I diving into into now I will go to locations um wooded areas by myself not in fear and I will actually look for stick structures or footprints or you know there's there's been um situations where I've I've gifted and I've had things in return and I'm still trying to make sense of that experience even though that that was profound um that's another one we can probably talk about as I'm you know Um, sharing my story with you um but you know as I look back like right now I'm in a completely different place with Sasquatch and what I think versus where I was five years ago when I had that first experience so um so a couple years okay after the report was published and then I started doing my own research there have been There are times I have taken a few, you know, there has been a few friends of mine who've been wanting to go out into the woods with me. Um, There have been three other people who have had experiences with me, but, you know, they don't want to come forward with anything. They'd rather just be a, okay, that was cool. You know, (laughs) Um, there was this one experience out in the, at this same hiking trail where I had um, taken a friend with me and we had gone back to an area where you can sit a couple miles back into the woods and we were just sitting there quietly and observing and this was later in, later in the day but not quite evening and he had pointed to the right and he says, do you see that? off in the woods and I I, I looked and I said it kind of looks like something is peeking around a tree something is there I mean we were far enough away where we couldn't make out exactly what we were seeing but it looked like something was peeking around a tree and both of us took out our phones and we were going to try and zoom in and get pictures Neither one of us at this moment was wanted to walk towards what we were seeing because we weren't sure what we were seeing. I mean, I've no, I've realized in the Sasquatch Bigfoot world, if you see something, and even in the unknown phenomenon world, if you see something and you're not sure what you're seeing, you, you take a minute and you go, I don't know. And for the most part, you forget to maybe take a picture or you forget maybe to try and do audio. So we're looking both looking in the same direction and going, it looks like something's peeking around a tree. So we both take our phones out. Neither one of our phones would work. And I'm like, I can't, my, I, my phone doesn't want me. Like I couldn't take a picture. I couldn't snap it. I couldn't turn it on. Like my phone would not work. His phone would not work. So both of us looked at each other and was like, okay, let's try and walk towards what we're seeing. And as we're walking towards what we were seeing, it disappeared. So how do you explain that? I don't know how to explain it. He didn't know how to explain it. We both chalked it up as a weird experience. Did we see Bigfoot? Did we see something else? So another occasion that I was out on this trail, and this happened now maybe three, four miles back on a different loop, a friend and I were out there and and this was a female friend and we were out there actually looking for blueberries because it's kind of a nice blueberry spot. And we were way off on one of the back, back trails. Um, And it's the same, you know, it's pines and maples and oaks and stuff. 
And we heard this like clicking, clicking noise. And we stopped. And I didn't know at this point, you know, what that would be or what that could be. We just heard like this clicking noise, like somebody was clicking something together. And she wasn't very comfortable, so she didn't want to stay. So we ended up leaving. I ended up contacting Rich Meyer over that. And I said, well, now we heard this clicking noise. Um, what do you think that might have been? So the next time I went out there, and at this point, this you know, this is like two, three years ago now, I was spending a lot of time out at this hiking trail. And I'll just, it's Days River Hiking Trail. I mean, it's in my report. So if anybody goes and looks up my report, they're going to know which area I'm talking about. So the next time I was out there, I picked up two rocks and I clicked them together. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's the noise we heard. So then I touched base, (laughs) touched base with Rich Meyer again. And I said, you know, that was the noise. And he said, yes, there's been reports from various people saying that they've heard clicking and, you know, across the board, people have come to a consensus that it might be them clicking rocks together. I said, well, that's what it sounded like. So then I chalk that up into my notepad. Okay, rock clicking. And then there was another time I was out there within this time frame that I took another female friend out there. And we were on another different loop that was way to the left of any of the loops I had already been on. More so on a side-by-side or snowmobile trail area that has not just hiking access, but people will take their side-by-side vehicles out there on this trail. So this was on a was on a a loop that's not really on the map of the hiking trail out there. And we were just walking, talking, and we heard what sounded like a dying cow. Now, this was very similar to my initial experience with the first female friend. Very similar. And we looked at each other, (laughs) and my friend was like, She had this look on her face, not look of fear, but look like what? And I looked at her and I said, see, told you they're out here. (laughs) So I was at this point, I was laughing because I'm now three years into my research. And I thought it was comical because we're hearing this. It sounds like an animal that's dying, but it almost sounded like a call. And it was very similar to my first experience. So I said, yep, they're out here. So that happened. And then... Um, intertwine all my, you know, stick structures through this. I mean, obviously I I don't, I don't bring someone out there all the time with me because not everybody wants to go out there and experience something unknown that might scare them. So on my days that I'm just out there by myself, I pay attention to stick structures and I have compiled a pretty large folder of pictures of just really weird structures, trees that are, that no human is going to go out there and make these star type structures or arrange sticks in A's or squares on the ground, or even, you know, stick them up in the air or um, put, you know, put a bunch of sticks inside a tree and line them up. Um, Big X's, X's that are really, really large or X's that are in front of a trail. Um, There's just been a a huge amount of stick structures that can't be explained. So I've been taking pictures. I've also had, I've found weird rock arrangements. Um, There's this, um, there's this river out there. So now I'm gonna now I want to I want to discuss the um, the gifting situation because that that would probably be right up there with the emotions that I felt with this one incident would be right up there with my initial um emo- the first in, my first experience with Sasquatch Bigfoot with that call this next experience I want to explain would be the, like the emotions that it brought out of me were very similar because this was um, something I didn't expect. So this was after one of the expeditions I had went on um, with the 
Upper Peninsula Bigfoot Sasquatch Research Organization expedition. I had been on, I think this would have been after the second exp- expedition I had been on with Rich's group. And then um, we were out in a different, uh, out in a different area. There's this area that is two hours east of where I live, where we do our expeditions. And um, by this point, I was feeling pretty confident that I I knew like Sasquatch, Bigfoot's habits, so to speak. You know, I've been collecting structure pictures. I had been getting like finding things on trails I shouldn't find, like little buttons, strange rocks, feathers. And, you know, I collect them and just kind of keep them and, you know, and then I put in my notebook where I found it and what my thoughts are on it. And then we were on this, I was on this expedition. So after the expedition uh, with the group, well, actually during the expedition, I've just, I have to back it up a bit because the gifting thing is a result of what happened on the expedition. So I was on this expedition and before an expedition, we go for a walk during the day and we scope out where we're going to go at night. So we were walking down a road, a dirt road, because the um, campground that we ex- we do expeditions at, it's a, it's a very, you know, rustic campground, but it's a, it's alongside a, a dirt road that um, is a very, you know, there's very, it's very long. There's miles and miles of dirt roads back out there. So we were walking on this dirt road off of the campground headed towards different areas where there has been known Sasquatch activity um, when they do expeditions out there. So we're just walking along this road and I look down and I see this rock. And um, I said to Rich and a couple of other people, I said, well, that's an interesting looking rock. And I was going to pass it up. And then I backed up and I picked up the rock and I noticed there was like some really interesting etching on it a fairly not a not a super large rock a rock that fits in the palm of my hand and there was like this like etching on it it did it didn't it wasn't like something ran it over and scraped it there was actually a picture on it like an etching of a picture and you know during the expedition all of us would be sitting around looking at the rock going what do you think what do you think that looks like? And I'm like, well, I don't know. One person is like, it looks like a dragonfly. Another person is like, it looks like a little boy. And I would just, I kept it and went, you know, I think I'm going to hang on to this rock because I'd like to bring it to somebody and have them maybe take a look at it and give me their opinion. And when I say someone, I mean the um, Native American uh, person who had given me my native Native American name, I felt like he was probably going to be the person who needed to see this rock and maybe give me an opinion on what he thinks it means, because it was just so unique and it had such a strange etching on it. So I ended up keeping that rock through the weekend, taking it home with me after the expedition, brought it home with me, got in contact with the Native American uh, couple that I have. Um, friendship with and sent this sent him a picture sent them a picture of the rock and asked them what they thought of it and I explained to them you know I'm I was on an expedition and they they know that we know each other really well so they know you know who I am and that I'm a psychic medium and that I'm also jumping into the Bigfoot world and so they know my story so I thought you know they might have some opinion so Bruce took a look at it and said I think it's a dragonfly. And his wife said the same thing that she thought it was a dragonfly and that it was um, interesting that I found that out at a, on a, a Bigfoot expedition. So they told me that what I should do with the rock is take it out to the river next to the, next to the area where I experienced my, where I have my experiences with Bigfoot Sasquatch, so to speak. So they um, suggested I take the rock out to the area where I've had my experiences, wash it in the river, do a ceremony with the rock, thank whoever gave it to me, and then leave um, a food offering, preferably squash and blueberries. Now, I asked no, I didn't really ask any questions on why I needed to do this. I just said, okay, if you think that I need to, because I trust Bruce and his wife, that they 
they're they're Native Americans and you know they're very well known in the community. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take this rock and go do a little ceremony and thank whoever gave it to me, and I'm going to wash it in the river and leave a squash and some blueberries. So I did that, and nothing happened. You know, while I was doing that, I just felt, okay, I'm doing someone a service. I don't I don't really know. I just knew that I was doing a ritual. <laughs> So I took the rock home. I left the blueberries and the squash. And I took pictures because I do that wherever I go. Whenever I'm doing anything, I now take pictures at this point. So I took the rock. I left. Said my goodbyes to whoever might have been listening. I left. I got home. Life goes on. And I touched base with Rich Meyer because him and I stay in contact whenever, you know, I'm kind of his kind of one of his researchers now. So it's like, I said, yeah, I went and did this thing because they told me to, you know, the native American people that I deal with told me to do that. So I did that. And I said, you know, we'll see what happens. So I think, I think about a week, a week to two weeks went by. I go back out there. Rich is like, you should go back out there and check the spot. And I'm like, okay. So I go back out there to check the spot where I gifted the sat, the squash, the squash and the blueberries and the squash was gone. The blueberries were gone. There was no remnants of any, any food, le- like there was no remnants of anything left. And then I looked a foot in front of where I had left the offering, which is next to the river. And in the river, I see a deceased deer, um, maybe a one or two year old doe. And I stopped and I went, what are the chances in my head? I was like, what are the chances that I'm, this is where I gifted. This is where I did the ceremony. And now there's a dead deer in the shallow river. And I became very emotional because I didn't know, like, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if this was a result of me gifting. I didn't know if, was I supposed to, like, see this? Like, my head started to spin. I was kind of freaked out, but curious. I actually messaged Rich and said, hey, can you give me a call? Because I'm at the gifting spot and there's a deer here that's dead in the river and I don't know what to do about it. Like, what what do I do from here? This is new to me. Is this bad, good, what? I didn't know what to think of it. So we got on the phone and he asked me a series of questions. He said, is its neck broken? And I'm like, great, you're going to want me to like take a look. <laughs> and, you know, the river was shallow. It was shallow. The, the water, you know, the melt off and the. It was now summer, so, you know, the river was very shallow. So I got closer to the deer, and I'm looking at it, and I'm on the phone with him, and I said, yeah, its neck is broken. And I'm actually kind of half crying at this point because I don't know what to think. I mean, I don't just walk up on dead deer with broken necks, you know. So (laughs) its neck was broken. He said, are any of its legs snapped? And... I said, I think so. I said, I think its front legs have been snapped. And I said, there's also like a scrape mark on its hind quarter, like something scraped its hind quarter. And I said, I don't feel comfortable right now being here. So I said, I'm going to actually walk away from the river and I'm going to go up because this was down a ravine too. This area is like down a ravine by the river. It's where I gifted. I mean, so you have to kind of walk down a hill. So I climbed back up the hill and I'm on the phone with Rich and I said, I don't know what to make of it. And he says, well, I think they gifted you a deer back. I said, what? And I was confused because I'm now jump, jumping into the world of gifting and I don't know what to make of it. So now they, now it's all changed up again. <laughs> like, okay, you know, I've been hearing noises and tree knocks and taking pictures of structures. And now I did this ceremony and did some gifting And now there's a deer. So he said, in his mind, he said, okay, I think they gifted you a deer back. I'm like, well, I don't want a deer. He's like, well, that's what you got. And I said, well, now I need to process this. I need to make sense of it. 
And I don't, even to this day, I still don't know what I make of it. I mean, if I take away the fear it invoked, were they really just gifting me a deer in return because I needed food? I mean, that's what one person that I've talked to is there. Like, maybe you just, maybe they felt you needed a deer because the deer was about the same size as you. And maybe they felt you needed a deer. I've had one person say that. I've had another person say, maybe it's a warning. That's their area. I don't know how I feel about that. And then I've had another person say, well, maybe that deer was eating the squash and the blueberries you had gifted and maybe they were mad and they killed the deer. So there's, there's quite a, there's a few theories here. I still do not know how I feel about it. Um, so I left the area. I didn't go back to that specific area for at least two weeks because I was scared. Okay. So I gifted, there's a dead deer in the river. Now what? So Rich had suggested that we go back to the area and see if the deer is still there. And maybe, you know, I should just confront that area and we can go from there and what to do with it. Because I'm like, I don't, I, I particularly did not feel comfortable seeing a dead deer with a snap neck and broken legs in the, in the creek. And I mean, in Sasquatch mind, maybe they were gifting me food back. Well, so I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't real comfortable with that. So we went back a little, you know, another week or two later, we went back and Rich and I actually jumped in the river. And, you know, at this point, the river is pretty shallow. And we, we took the deer out of the river. We put it on the shore. And I was just sad because I, I mean, even if they were gifting me, if they were gifting me with no harm, you know, not with good intentions. If they were gifting me with good intentions, I don't need a dead deer. I don't need a deer. You know, I'd rather they gift me buttons and rocks, which is what I was receiving before I started food gifting. So I haven't food gifted since um, because I don't want dead animals gifted to me. It's not what I want. So we, we took the deer out of the river we put it on the shore i did a little ceremony because i felt like i needed to do a ceremony that this de- if this deer gave up its life to make a point okay but i do not need dead animals so we put it on the shore did a little ceremony and left and then and i didn't go back to that spot for like another two weeks and i only went back because rich is like you need to go back and see if the deer is still there or if it's gone and I'm like, fine, I'll go do that. So I did. I went back there a couple weeks later again, and the deer was gone. And it wasn't like someone drug it. There was no drag marks. There was no deer fur left behind. There was no sign that it was that it ever even existed. It was as if somebody had picked it up, carried it off without dragging it, because and I ended up taking pictures, you know, of this as well. I took pictures each time I went out there. There was no evidence that the deer was ever even there. And that was just mind-blowing to me. Like, now somebody came and got it. They would have had to pick it up. It was at least a 100-pound 100, 100 deer. That's what we averaged anyway. That was at least 100 pounds because it looked like it weighed about as much as I do. So it was at least about 100 pounds. And it's like... If it was a person, they would have probably drug it, but there was not even any deer fur. Like there was no, there was no evidence that the deer had even been there. So it's an area that I don't go back to alone, even though I've been told that I should just, you know, maybe get over the fear. But that was a very, very um, emotional experience for me. So I've only been back to that specific spot alone, not alone. Um, I went back there recently with two other people. And um, that was maybe maybe two months ago with um, Rich and I went to the spot. And then we actually took one other person out there with us who's interested in the Bigfoot world. And we were hoping she was going to have an experience while we were out there walking that night. Um which we ended up having experiences that night with the new person. But um, that's the only time I've been back to that specific spot is with other people. 
I'm just uncomfortable going back to that spot alone. Yeah, no of, doubt. Yeah, I don't know. I still don't know to this day what to make of it. I mean, do you there's think no, there was no evidence left? <laughs> yeah, do you think possibly they were just letting you know they were watching you, but letting you know, like in a harsh way? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I, just I know guess I don't it's give, kind, I don't it's give like food a threat. Anymore. Yeah, look, kind of like in a threatening way, but without actually harming you. You know, just some type of creature letting you know it's been there. Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Um, or it's um, yeah. spiritual. You know, they accepted your guys' gifts and they were trying to be polite, and that's their way of showing kindness. You know, I mean, overall, when you think about it, if you try and break it down and be logical, which obviously this Bigfoot Sasquatch world is not logical in any sense. But mm -hmm. if you were to like, go, oh, OK, Bigfoot, 8 to 10, 12 feet tall, big, powerful, you know. If they're going to leave a message, probably be a dead animal. <laughs> I, don't know. I still can't wrap my head around that particular experience. Was so I don't gift food anymore. Yeah. Was the deer around the stick structures? There is one, there's one particular, I don't know if it's a stick structure, but there's one area not too far from where that deer was laying where there's this big X of like two trees that have been pushed over, but then crossed over. Like, it's an X, but it's an old X. It, you can tell that these two trees were pushed over a long time ago, but they were pushed over in an X formation. But you can tell that they've been pushed over long before I had any Bigfoot experiences back there. I have made note of that. And I actually, I do have a picture of that particular X. I just know that that X has been back there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. What have you found out about the stone with the writing on it? Oh, um, I've had other psychic mediums touch it. I've had the Native American people look at it. Um, I, I personally, personal, my personal opinion is that it was a gift to me on the expedition. The Sasquatch that are in the area where we did the expedition know me. Because when I received that rock, that was the second time I had been out there. I feel it was a gift to me. I think that I think the symbolism, the symbol on it, is a dragonfly because it feels right. But I do feel like the rock is ancient and it didn't come, it didn't or originate from where I found it. Um, the Native American people that looked at it said they think it's a dragonfly and they think that it was meant for me to find. But where that rock is leading me is totally my journey. No one else's journey to you know basically make an opinion on but i've had one medium touch it and say she thought it she thought that a little boy had etched on it i had some other one other medium say that she felt that a little boy etched it and she felt it was like from it was like egyptian times so that's the story of the rock <laughs> yeah it's really cool and it'd be neat to find more out about it mm -hmm. yeah i don't know um who else i could reach out to you know have take a look at it and get an opinion on it but um the next time i do an expedition in the area where i found it i'm bringing it with me yeah and was that found around the structures or like a couple miles within a radius that, that rock was found in a wildlife refuge area two and a half hours northeast of my area where I go squatching in an area where people where it's a, it's a completely different area of the upper peninsula but it's an, a squatchy area a known squatchy area yeah and um, I don't now like when I go back out there this year to the expedition um, I'll be looking for structures I did not look for structures the last time so this would have been two years ago because last year I didn't make the expedition. So 
this year I'll make the expedition and this year I'll be looking for structures when we're out investigating during the day. Um, a lot has changed in my, you know, in my research in the last, in the last two years. I mean, what I would be looking for two years ago, I, w- I wouldn't be, what I'm looking for now, I didn't look for two years ago. Um, I'm more, you know, I do a little more investigating now when I'm out looking for more clues that maybe the average eye isn't looking for. Yeah. And what did you think the clicking sounds meant when you heard them, the rock clacking? Or when I look, I think I think that was just them, either letting us know they knew we were there, mm-hmm. or maybe they were letting each other know that there was some humans walking on a trail close to where they might be. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an excellent theory. I often think the same whenever I hear the rock clacks. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of those two things, I think. I mean, hey, you know, someone's in our area or letting us know. I mean, because if you, if you want to, you know, there's also the side of me that's thinking that if Sasquatch has telepathic communication with certain individuals they're letting that individual know they know Mm -hmm. you're there, you know? Yeah. And have you had any, have you had any strange psychic experiences while out in the woods? Like maybe they led you to some structures or you could communicate with them. Yes. If, um, now this, and this touches on it on an area, obviously where, you know, it can be open to debate, but mm-hmm. in my opinion, I feel that I have a open line of communication with the Sasquatch that are in the area that I've been researching for five years. I feel that they have told me things. I feel that they call me out there when I need to go out there because there's times that I will be just randomly doing stuff and I'll be around my house doing things and next thing you know it's like I gotta go I've gotta go out there today I have I have to go I have to go out there today and then I always you know collaborate with somebody typically rich I'll be like hey I'm heading out there feel like I need to be out there and more times than not when I go out there because I feel like I'm being called out there I'll either find a new structure or I'll be looking at an old structure a different a structure that I already know of but I'll be seeing something different about it Mm-hmm. Or I'll get a button dropped in the middle of a, you know, I'll see something on the ground that shouldn't be in the spot that's at. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'll hear a whistle. I'll get whistled at or I'll get, like, giggled at. Or I'll hear somebody talking when there's nobody out there. There's a lot, there's a lot of bizarre things. Um, and it seems like if I go out there, if I go out to, well, there's another spot that I, I've been doing some research on just recently. And I'm finding different things. But let's go back to the the, the well known area. Um, if I go out there looking, it seems like I don't have any really anything different go on. It's almost like when I'm getting called to go out there, that's when things happen. But if I just randomly go out there because I want to go out there, or if I'm I mean my intention is to go out there and have an experience, it doesn't nothing seems to happen. Um, it's very, it's very, it's a very interesting world to be a part of because it's just so different than being a psychic medium. It's a whole different, it's like, it's a, it's a different level of unknown stuff. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, no doubt. And somehow your subconscious has a role with how your, your reality plays out. I believe I've also had, um, times where I've been out in that area hiking on an area i mean i know those trails like the back of my hand day or night i know them all of the trails out there even the trails that nobody will go on the trails that are off the trails and there has been two times now where i've been out there on a trail and i get disoriented and i don't know where i'm at and i've read i've read that people have disorientation um issues at times when they're in sasquatch territory and um 
I mean, it's, it's happened where I'll be standing, I'll be walking a trail and I'll stop and go, okay, do I need to go right or left? I can't remember. Do I need to go right? Do I need to go left? Which way is my way out of here? And I'll be like, I'm getting disoriented. And I actually just had a disorientation um, incident two nights ago in a different location that I just started researching in my, in the Sasquatch world. And I had a person with me. So um, we both were like, where are we? Do we go left or right? And I went, oh, here we go. It's a different area. And now we're getting disoriented. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I feel like disorientation is a, a weird. So what are they doing? Are they mixing the signals? I mean, what is happening where you can be in an area that you know really well and then you all of a sudden don't know where you are? Yeah, absolutely. I've heard uh, many people report the same. Um, and I mean, I'm by far, no, I am not an expert in this field. Nobody's an expert. I think if for me, I mean, obviously my experiences are my experiences yeah. and I'm just trying to figure out, and I, I don't even know if it's figure it out. I'm just trying to make sense of what it is I'm experiencing and maybe make some determinations. I'm open to, you know, all different theories. Um, I don't subscribe to like, if I've talked to people who are hell bent on, they are a flesh and blood creature or they are interdimensional or, you know, there's like all these different theories and I don't subscribe to one particular theory because what if they're all correct? They could all be correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm just having experiences and want to talk about them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Tammy. Well, I appreciate you telling your experiences here on the show. And if you have any more questions or photos, feel free to send them over to me. And I appreciate it. Why? I appreciate you having me on your show. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's been hard to get together and we had to play (laughs) cat and mouse. Hey, you know what? It all lines up when it's supposed to. That's how it works. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I'll let you get on with your day, and I appreciate everything. Awesome. I'm glad that we could uh, finally get this done. (laughs) Yeah, me too. And I'll reach out in the future and share the link for the episode. Okay, great, because um, I have um, a few different um, people who are going to be waiting on that and wanting to watch and listen and and stuff so yeah great very good all right well i'll let you know and i'll let you get on with the rest of your day and i appreciate the time great 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 so you have a good one yeah you too we'll talk soon all right yep bye bye i was really excited to interview tammy and I was glad we were able to document her experiences. I agree with the statement she made about looking for the Sasquatch. It really does seem like when you look for the activity, you will often find nothing. It's always when you least expect it that you will discover something new. I think it's really cool she found a group to research with and share her finds and ideas. Don't allow other people to discourage you from going out with a group to do research. You are making the right move by going with a group of people. Never enter these large forests by yourself or unarmed. As far as the meditating or mind speak, I have personally never experienced that while out in the forest, but I can't say it can't happen, obviously. My belief is we should never communicate with things we do not know of. So if we get a voice that gives us a message, how can we say for sure it's a Sasquatch? and not a demon tricking us. Also, as a hunter, you never want to go into the forest and sit down with your eyes closed. If you are in an area with mountain lions and bears, you are giving them your back and an easy shot at your neck area. It's better to always be aware of your surroundings by looking and observing everything around you. And of course, that's just my opinion as an outdoorsman and a Christian. And of course, I'm not trying to discourage anyone. That's just the way I view it because of my beliefs and my experiences. 
Anyways, that's all I have for today, and I really appreciate everybody watching. Until the next one, take care everyone.